<laughs> they seem to feel my pain. Crescendo effect. Um, 80% of our applicants came through our networks, or maybe that's not the right channel. North America. It is funny. They completely failed. Welcome to another episode of D3's Mission Log. This is the effort we're making to log the journey of learning for Third Derivative, the world's largest climate tech accelerator. And I'm speaking as I do every week with Brian, who's the CEO and leader of the Third Derivative, to find out some lessons learned this week. And we wanted to talk about the outreach function of an accelerator, because if you're in the audience and you know, you, you're know you trying to find the world's best and brightest to get into your accelerator to create game-changing companies and access all the resources and training we've teamed up as part of the accelerator, you got to get the best and brightest. So what, what's the solicitation process? What's the What's the story to finding those folk? Brian, over to you. Yeah, let, let's be clear, right? We've only had one um, one go at this so far, but happy to share what we've learned through that process. Um, last year, we went from being completely dark in stealth mode to raising ourselves above into the surface, saying, hello world, and we wanna find the best and brightest, uh, most impactful startups out there. And within just a few weeks, had more than 600 apps from more than 60 countries with a broad range of technologies and sectors and such. So it, I think the outcome for that first shot on goal was pretty um, was pretty effective, especially considering that two thirds of those uh, startups feature at least one founder who we would call kind of a historically underrepresented founder as well. So we're, we're very pleased with the outcome. So some kind of stats, some takeaways from our actual outreach efforts. 80% um, of our applicants came through our networks. We've talked in a previous episode about some of the pros and cons. Um, of depending on your networks, but direct outreach was incredibly impactful for us. And the the kind of application takeaway there is that making direct outreach easy is really important. So for example, our um, marketing team put together some really awesome, easily replicable emails, LinkedIn posts, LinkedIn messages with graphics, you know, things that would really attract attention and generate a response. That just made it really easy for the our entire team and for our partners as well to kind of reach out on on our behalves. Um, I think if it had been left to us to to do it all on our own, we probably would have had much less. We we also um, enjoyed a benefit from content marketing. So we had made some blog posts about some of the challenges that climate tech startups perceive, and that resonated and and drew a lot of climate tech startups to say, "Hey, they seem to <laughs> they seem to feel my pain. Uh, let me see what they're." doing to solve that pain and, and then they applied. Um, so the content, content marketing specifically kind of targeted at startups, uh, I think is pretty important. And, and more broadly, having a very um, tight startup oriented value proposition is, is super key as well. You know, we, we're a complex organization, right? We, have, we serve startups, we serve corporate partners, we serve VC investor partners, we serve policymakers. We, you, I would argue we serve society writ large. Um, so that can make for a very complex value proposition. And it was important for us to make sure that we knew and understood the startup pain and that we addressed it in all of our messaging to them. Yeah, I'm gonna stop you there because I think that was a really strong piece of it. Like, you know, we obviously help outreach for a lot of events and competitions and accelerators and things through New Energy Nexus's chapters, but that package kind of posting and tweets and the, the me email messages that you said you got generated with help from the marketing team with a few different graphics combined with a bit of content around, you know, the four valleys of death that you're going to overcome. I think it told a story to a startup that made sense that, that resonated with them with where they were at. So I guess takeaway is an obvious one, you know, advertise the value prop that's going to capture the attention of, of your target audience. That, that's right. Um, and then there's a the question about, well, how do you reach people with that message? Mm -hmm. uh, and as I say, we leaned pretty heavily on our networks. We tried to reach new networks through paid advertising. Um, I think mostly on Twitter and LinkedIn may have done in WeChat um, as well. And we had kind of mixed results there. Um, you know, some decent results, but we also found there to be a really diminishing returns after a specific ad had been up targeting a, the same audience. Mm -hmm. About three weeks seemed to be about this, the cliff after which we really saw very poor returns. So ads, possibly a good part of your marketing mix, but definitely be sensitive to um, um, how they can get pretty stale and stop being mm -hmm. terribly useful. I will say in our um, within our networks, we found there to be many fewer referrals from the VC investors who are part of our 
um, ecosystem than we had hoped. We thought that they would prefer uh, existing port uh, portfolio companies, potential companies that weren't quite ready for their investment yet to us. And um, we just didn't see much deal flow there. Maybe we didn't kind of manage that channel as well as we should have done, or maybe that's not the right channel. Mm -hmm. um, something we did, this isn't to, um, to gen up uh, actual applications per se, but something we were trying to do to help our team actually process the applications and review them was uh, be very clear that we were, uh, we were accepting and reviewing applications on a rolling basis rather than just after the deadline. We thought that would kind of spread things out and they completely failed. Uh, we'll, we'll post uh, an image here on the video in, of our application flow and you'll see it's all, you know, basically like midnight on the, um, the date of the application. There's a, there's a point there too, though. Um, there was some confusion around when our application actually closed. Mm -hmm. um, midnight when, if we are a global, global entity. So if you are soliciting global uh, deal flow, I think you have to be very clear in which time zone. Which time and, zone. And ideally make it a time zone that isn't you know, super North American. It is funny what you described though, this crescendo effect. Every single one of these things we've done just last day is just this crazy time. You can count on 50% of things coming in that last couple of days for sure. And for us, I think it was much more than uh, than fifty percent, actually. But yeah, we'll 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 share the graph out here as well. Any other lessons from the outreach? Otherwise, we can move on to the startup of the week. One more. I, I would broadly say, you know, um, of course, we could have benefited from some longer lead time to build up a little bit more um, buzz before we kind of went live with it. But you know, again, our operating model is that the climate isn't waiting, so neither are we. So we were very keen just to get out there. And I'm, I'm glad we did it. I'd, I'd do it again. Absolutely. And look at the result. You know, as you said, the outcome was very strong. So well done. Okay. Tell us about one of those companies you found through that process that you are highlighting this week on Mission Log D3. Yeah. So this is definitely one of our more technical startups, CO2 Energy. Um, really neat. They, they're developing an electrolyzer that can produce really high value industrial gases by converting CO2 to carbon monoxide. CO2 and water to syngas, um, water to hydrogen. I mean, they, they have a number of different outputs that they can make, but they, the important part is that these are gases, these industrial gases that are used in green plastics, chemical, petrochemical, metal processing industries. And today they're primarily produced from fossil fuel sources. There are other companies out there trying to do something similar, but they often require very expensive uh, inputs and CO2 has found a way to use um, inputs into their system that are much more readily accessible and inexpensive. So we think they can be really scalable. Awesome. All right, well, thanks for doing another week of D3 Mission Log, and we'll be back here next week with some more lessons learned from building the world's largest climate tech accelerator. That's right, everyone like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more.